hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're wondering where i've been for the longest time do please check out my recent instagram blog post where i detailed everything that's been happening to me for the past three to four months video so in this video i'll be reviewing i think eight to nine sunscreens um i'll try to video all of them right now at a go if i can't i will probably like record the other parts in, in subsequent videos and attach each of them together let's get right into this video so in Aside from the fact that these two sunscreens have an SPF rating of 50 and a booster rating of 4, they have quite identical ingredient listings with a small switch rule at the end. They both have the same UV filters, homosalate, autocrylene, evobenzone, oxybenzone, octisalate, and enzacamine. These sunscreens are water resistant up to 40 minutes and they are best suited for folks with dry skin. I think it, it, was, it was after like using them for like a week thereabouts. I was using this one for face. Sorry, I was using this one on my face and this one on my body and within like five to seven days I noticed that my skin was going really 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 dark and I had to stop entirely. If you are into like protecting your skin from burning but you want to tan, then get this sunscreen. If you don't want to tan at all, please do not get this sunscreen. Or probably maybe I got the wrong batch because I think this one is a recent batch to 2021. I will have to check to be sure. This one I'm not sure which batch this is, but I will definitely I'm coming one minute okay so this is 2020 and this is 2021 batch so still they did not give me what they were supposed to give and i had to trash them with regards to how they feel on the skin both sunscreens are quite greasy on application though this one for face has a lighter texture and this one for body has a thicker texture but they are quite greasy by the time you're done applying them on your skin they leave like this greasy shiny finish on the skin really so if you want to check them out you can still check them out but for me they were like a complete letdown and because of these two sunscreens i'm kind of like having doubts if i want to continue reviewing sunscreens or not because it's quite annoying in the sense that when i'm done treating my hyperpigmentation i use the wrong sunscreen and everything just goes to shit anyway moving on to the next sunscreen Another alcohol concentrated sunscreen I mistakenly purchased last year is the Amber Soleil Clear Protect Transparent Protection Spray SPF 50. After my sad experience with the Riemann P20 spray, I made sure to read the packaging of this one well before testing it and sadly I discovered that alcohol is at the top of the ingredient list and it is not recommended for use on the face. It has 6 UV filters and applies so well on the skin. Like the natural alcohol aside, this body sunscreen is a winner. It dries down in 3 to 5 seconds, leaving a glowy finish. I only encountered problems on reapplication as it started to peel and gets quite greasy. My palms also got a bit sticky on reapplication. This is the first Amber Soleil sunscreen that I've ever used that actually promises to be non greasy and is in reality non greasy and it has high water resistance, but sadly, as you apply more layers of the products, the grease factor begins to creep in really, really, really fast. Um, I really, really loved using this sunscreen. Why using the sunscreen? My skin did not tan. Depending on how many layers of the product that you apply, you might need a double cleanse or a triple cleanse to get the product off. It is that water resistant, as in it really adheres to the skin. I got these products for eight pounds on Amazon UK, so you can check them out if you want to get them. I've not seen any Nigerian retailer who stocks this. Um, moving on. So the next sunscreen I have here is this one from Hawaiian Tropic and this is the Hawaiian Tropic Silk Hydration Protective Sun Lotion with Hydrating Ribbons. This offers an SPF 50 protection with 4 UVA stars and I really 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 love this sunscreen. I really enjoyed using it. This I have to say is the mattest sunscreen I've ever used if that word exists. Like I said it is the mattest sunscreen as it dries down really really matte especially on the body. On my face it doesn't really give that matte feeling because i have oily skin but on my body is like really really matte and when i say it's really really matte it doesn't like mattify and dry out the skin the skin still feels moisturized but matte really really matte i love this sunscreen why is it the sunscreen my skin did not turn one bit um it just and it has fragrance to it but the fragrance is quite like really really nice i love the fragrance now the only issue i have with this sunscreen is that just like the other two hawaiian tropics sunscreen that i've reviewed in the past this one also stings on the face it stings for like 15 to 30 minutes thereabouts, and then it subsides 
I tried it twice on my face and afterwards I was like, you know what, let me just use this as a body sunscreen. And so that's what I did. I used this as a body sunscreen. And like I said, my skin did not tan while using it. Another con with this sunscreen is that it tends to leave a white cast. Now, a white cast in the sense that when you apply the sunscreen, it blends into the skin really well, even the beard area, leaving no white cast at all. But if you're going to be spending so much time outdoors and the weather is very, very hot and you begin to sweat, there's a tendency for this to leave white patches all over your face and your body. Sadly, I've lost the footage of the white patches that this thing left on my skin, but just have it in mind. If you are going out on a very, very hot day and you are sweating too much, this might leave a white cast. So those are just the two cons with this sunscreen. Other than that, the sunscreen is quite amazing. Like I said, this is the mattest sunscreen I have ever, ever used. And, sorry, to be honest, I wouldn't mind repurchasing this. I love it so much. Sunscreens in general are meant to protect your skin from the harmful UV rays, but this one from La Roche Posay seeks to also heal your skin barrier at the same time. This is the La Roche Posay Cicapazban B5 SPF 50. Think of it as La Roche Posay Cicapazban B5 for daytime use. It has the five main skin barrier repair ingredients plus added ceramides with a whooping eight UV filters thrown in. There's no advertised UVA rating on the packaging, but in communication with the brand, they claim a PPD of 20 PA4 pluses. This is a chemical sunscreen, but it does leave a somewhat greasy, very minimal gray cast, which is markedly noticeable in the hairline area. Applying the sunscreen in three layers helps minimize the white cast and reduce application time. The white cast is very minimal compared to what is obtainable from the regular Cicaplast Balm B5. On the packaging, it says this is not a sun care product, and when I asked why, this is what the brand had to say. I cannot vouch for the effectiveness of this product due to the fact that it leaves a white cast and due to that I have not worn it outdoors. According to reviews on Boots UK, this is not compatible with makeup, so if you wear makeup, this might make your makeup peel or not apply very very well, so do have that in mind. There is no water resistant rating for this product, so I basically just go in with my Dove Beauty Bar and that gets the sunscreen off completely. So the question here now is, do you really need this version that has SPF 50 or should you just stick with the regular version? My thoughts on this are, if you have the regular version, just stick with that one because that one is a lot cheaper than this one that has SPF 50. Apply a very thin layer of that one in the daytime and then apply your sunscreen over it. A very thin layer guarantees you that it will leave a very, 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 very minimal or noticeable white cast and then you apply your sunscreen over it. If you don't have the original version, then get this one that has an SPF 50 since it has like way less white cast than the, the, the original version. But like I said, remember you need to apply enough products if you are using it as a sunscreen because the brand said this is not a sun care product i don't know why now for those who might be interested with the original version what i do to reduce the white cast during the daytime is like i kind of like mix it with a little bit of moisturizer and a little bit of oil to dilute it and then i apply it all over my face and my neck by the time i'm done massaging it into the skin the white cast disappears I don't know whether that would work for you or not, but for me that works. But then again, mixing an oil and moisturizer with the product might affect the effectiveness of the product, but I don't really know, but that's how I use it when I want to use it during the daytime. A little bit, moisturizer, oil, and then I'm good to go. So in a nutshell, this was the La Roche Posay Cicla Basman B5 SPF 50. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan, so I still have a little bit of products left here. I'll just use that up. At mainly when I'm at home and that's it. This retails for like 9 euros for 40 mils of product but I got it from Beauty Espacio for 6,500 Naira. I'm not purchasing this but hey if you want it you can get it like I said it leaves less white cast than the other products. Do you guys remember when I said you should avoid all sunscreen that have zinc oxide, titanium dioxide and tinosorb M if you don't appreciate looking grey or white? This sunscreen from Peace Beyond is a total letdown as I had high hopes for it being that non-greasy, high SPF, high UVA potential factor sunscreen that I've been fantasizing about for a long while. But sadly, it left a smooth, powdery, then silicone calamine lotion-like grayish cast on my skin. It feels and looks greasy too. The fragrance in this product is borderline annoying and I think it pisses me off mostly because of the white cast. 
I was really rooting for this sunscreen as it has 4 UV filters including Tinosub S and a 4 boot star rating. I may be wrong but after going through the ingredient listing I think silica is to blame for the white cast. I also noticed that this sunscreen is made by Johnson & Johnson who handles Neutrogena who in turn is notorious for chemical sunscreens that tend to leave a white cast. So probably this is an in-house issue. Either way, this is just tragic. Sadly, I bought two of this. Um, so if you're interested in like testing it out yourself, I can send this to you if you want so that you can try it out for yourself and see how well it performs on your own skin. Moving on. So this is the Altruist Dermatologist Face Fluid SPF 50 with 5 boot star rating. For the longest time, I've been dying to try this sunscreen because I've seen quite a number of you know content creators of color who have reviewed it as not having a white cast. I was lucky enough to get this as a PR package from Beauty Espacio when I got um, the La Roche Posay Capaz Balm B5 SPF 50. Sadly, while using this, this also left a white cast on my own skin. But what I have to say about the sunscreen is that what I love about the sunscreen is that it's quite light, it's fluid. As it says, it's fluid. It's quite light on the skin. It absorbs really, really fast into the skin. And unlike the OG Archery Dermatology Sunscreen SPF 50 that you need to like keep rubbing and rubbing for about 10 minutes, this one I think within like two, three minutes there, but I was able to like layer the entire sunscreen on my face really without like pulling and tugging and you know like dragging my skin everywhere. So that's like a positive for the sunscreen. Another thing to note is that this sunscreen is fragrance free. So if you have skin that is sensitive to fragrance, this is right up your alley. Check it out. This sunscreen has like seven to eight UV filters thereabouts. And like I said, sadly, it does leave a white cast because it contains titanium dioxide nano and tinosub M, if I'm not wrong. I'll show it on the screen. But it's just an all round like promising sunscreen which sadly I cannot say how effective it is because I did not use it outdoors. I think I only wore this twice indoors and after that I stopped wearing it because you know the whole white cast something. Now in comparison with the regular artery sunscreen, this does not feel heavy on the skin. It doesn't um, like clog my pores or whatever, it just feels quite light on the skin. Though, it can be a bit greasy, it can feel a bit greasy, but it's not as greasy as that other sunscreen. Um, what else do I have to say about this? I think that's basically all about, I can say about this exactly. On my skin tone, it leaves a white cast. On your skin, if you're lighter than I am, it might not leave a white cast. So I'm not sure how much this retails for. I will have to check, but I'm, and I'll put it across the screen. But if you want it, if you live in Nigeria and you, and you want to check it out, you can check it out from Beauty Espacio. Beauty Espacio sells it for... Oops, I don't remember. I will shall leave it there. Anyhow, I got this as a PR package and I really wish it did not leave a white cast because this was a joy to apply on the skin. So what I have here is the Bior um, UV Aqua Rich something essence something 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 something. It's shown on the screen. Now, I don't understand what you people love about the sunscreen to be honest. Um, I don't know whether you guys are loving the pre-2019 formula or the 2019 formula because what I have here, if I'm not wrong, is the 2019 formula and I really don't like this stuff. Don't get me wrong, this sunscreen is like, it's like the, one of the most hyped sunscreens ever. Everyone seems to love it. Oh my god, it's so amazing, it's so moisturizing, it doesn't leave a white cast and don't get me wrong exactly, all of these things, it does it, but I just have a problem with that moisturizing part. This sunscreen is way too moisturizing for my liking. As in, if you are into hydration and you, you apply loads of hydration to your face and you now top it off with this sunscreen and the weather is hot and humid, hell, chineke, ige hate them with You will hate yourself. As in, it's as if someone puts like nylon back over your head and is trying to choke you to death. That is what this sunscreen feels like to me. And I don't like that. Now, don't get me wrong. The sunscreen actually works. It does what it's supposed to do. It moisturizes your skin. It protects your skin really, really well. Because when I use the sunscreen, I don't tan. The moisturizing like um, quality of this sunscreen is so good in the sense that just one application plumps off my dehydration lines throughout the entire day. I don't need to reapply again. My dehydration line just stay plumped up as in you won't see any line as in. 
that is how good this sunscreen is but due to the fact that it just very very suffocating that is the reason why i don't appreciate the sunscreen based on what is written on the back like in japanese and everything and what i translated off google translate this sunscreen is not recommended for people who have sensitive skin so do have that in mind now would i recommend this sunscreen yes i would recommend this sunscreen if um you have dry skin and you need that hydration two if you live in places that are very cold and dry and you need that hydration probably maybe during winter season or hamatan season thereabouts and you need the hydration to get this um three if you're into japanese bdsm because let's face it literally this thing chokes it choke die um this retails for like seven thousand naira i think or seven thousand five hundred naira that's the cheapest you can find it i got it mine by buy better but i think on yes style this retails for like twenty dollars thereabouts this is the 80 is it 80 grams? I be 85 grams. I don't know. This is a big size either way. And um, yeah. So let's jump right to the next sunscreen. I think this, this will be the final sunscreen and this review will be up. Um, I have these two sunscreens from Boots Sultan. For the longest time, I've been dying to try their try out their sunscreens, and I finally got these two. Um, this one has an SPF 30, and this is the Boots Sultan Protect and Moisturize Sun Care Lotion SPF 30 and five Boots Star Rating. It promises to offer intense moisturization, promises to be non-greasy and water resistant. As far as water resistant goes, I didn't really find this to be water resistant in the sense that I could easily wash this off with my Dove Beauty Bar. The main issue I had with this sunscreen is that it is very, 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 very greasy. Forget the claim that it is not greasy. It's very, very greasy. With regards to intensive moisturization, I didn't really, really feel as if my skin was like intensely moisturized. It just felt very intensively greasy. But the main, the main issue with this shy is that when I used this, my skin did not tan. And because of that, I love the sunscreen. But like I said, it's very, very greasy. Also, I don't like the fragrance. It's a floral fragrance, I think, that is like, oh, very, very icky. Not a good fragrance. The other one I have here is the SPF 50 version, but this one comes in like a spray format. Um, I also use this on my face, but it's quite difficult to use. Aha, uh -huh, wait for, for that. And another issue I have with this is that if you notice the, the, the what's it called, the lettering is already like breaking away and ugh. I don't know, it has very, very poor packaging and poor printing. So back to the review. Um, so this is the Boots of Tan Protect and Moisturize Sun Care Spray SPF 50 Plus with UVA 5 Boot Star Rating. Just like the other one, this also promises intensive moisturization, promises to be non-greasy as well. It's light in texture because of course, Dolly, it's a spray, but it's very, very, very greasy. When all is said and done, it still protected my skin really, really well and my skin did not tan while using these two products. Now, would I repurchase any of these two products? Honestly speaking, I don't think so because they are very, very greasy. And um, I'm not a huge fan of the fragrance. Though the fragrance doesn't linger, but I'm not a huge fan of the fragrance. So if you're a dark skin person looking to try out some boots or tan sunscreens, these two sunscreens are what I would advise you to get. They do not leave a white cast at all. So do check them out. So I think with that, we've come to the end of these reviews. Um, don't forget to please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.